de Havilland Group, what is it you're making here? Well, to be honest, Lizzie, what is it that we don't make? Um, we actually go from large to small components, anything from down to sort of 10 mil, right up to about 420 mil. Um, we also do the large fabrications. We're in all sorts of various industries. Um, we do oil, gas, water. Um, we are also a one-stop shop. We do everything from start to finish, all various products. Um, we, we service each other in terms of uh, our, that side gives us work and we give them work. So is that fabrication across there? That's fabrication across there, yes. And here you're making here the components? Here we're the CNC side, that we, yeah. And then over there we've also got another uh, side which is another fabrication but it's all to do with stainless steel, duplex, etc. Wow, what a facility. Okay, so let's talk about parts and components. Yep. Now, you recently purchased off Herco yep. a lathe and a milling machine. We'll That's cover correct, the milling yeah. machine in a moment. The lathe, right. Yep. What was the reason behind this purchase? Um, the reason behind the purchase was due to the fact of uh, the actual footprint of the machine is relatively small. Um, but not only in that, it, because with the bar feeder and the capacity that the machine has with the 81mm um, spindle bore, and the, which has never been done, as far as I'm aware, on this side of things before, that they've never done on the TM10. Um, so in terms of our, what we needed for the capacity, in terms of the price point as well, which was actually relatively budget friendly for the specification and technicality of what we wanted. And let's talk programming now, because yep. as an operator, you really like this, don't you? Yes, it's very easy to use. Um, the, I am used to actually programming on the um, G-code side of things, um, and obviously making parts, for example, on there, um, you have to do a lot of calculations and longhand typing of, of you know, machining of the components. Um, but on here, being as it's conversational, and they are one of the leaders in the conversational side of things, it's very easy to use because you can just go on there, it asks you exactly what you want, you type in the figures and digits and tell it what you want and it will make it for you. So it's, it's brilliant. So are you working offline or on the control panel? No, we work mainly, mainly on the control, especially on the lathes. Um, we do do a, a little bit offline, but that's mainly on the million side of things. Right, let's head over to the mill. Okay. Lewis, there's an interesting story on the VM20i, isn't there? Great, Lindsay, yeah. <laughs> um, so after initially purchasing the place in the order for the um, lathe, um, about two weeks later, our um, previous mill actually just went bang. Oh. So, um, yeah, obviously then we were kind of in the market for another VMC. So, obviously, well, after placing the order with the Herco and obviously actually going down there and seeing how easy the control was to use, um, it actually made sense then to actually buy in another machine from the same company and you know it's just the same operating system so obviously what you can do on there you can come straight on and do on here. And so, you've got a colleague that you're working or training? Right? Yes that's correct so at the moment it, what basically one of the reasons of well of buying the machine is because obviously we've been used to doing g-code um, but we found that G-code and actually it's, it's a bit of a dying art form. It's, it's quite long-winded, the process. Um, so we've actually found that actually the conversation side of things is a lot easier to teach and train people to um, use. So I am, was currently in the process of training my colleague on the uh, VMC, which was conversational. Um, but obviously then it made sense to then have another conversational of the same brand, which you can then transpose your skills so it made sense for us it does it feels like a win-win situation it, and it the timing was, yeah. almost feels a bit like fate yeah maybe, <laughs> maybe. some wouldn't say just that but yes <laughs> well that's true okay any other features on the machine that you like um, well yeah actually with this machine um, it's actually a brilliant machine in terms of its capacity and uh, small small footprint that's in um, it's, it's very small for the capacity um, and also it's got a, a 10,000 RPM spindle, which isn't very common in this sort of size of machine unless you pay extra for. Um, so yeah, it's got many features of it that, you know, made it a win anyway. So, and you mentioned about the torque as well. You know, yeah, it's got quite a lot of torque on the low end. So it, it's, it's quite grunty at the low end, but it's also revs right up for the higher machining parts. Are you pushing it? To, are you pushing it to its? I am uh, pushing it to its limits. <laughs> yes, I'm going all the way out. But enjoying it. Enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs>